The Age of Invention by Norman Spinrad. One morning, having nothing better to do, I went to visit my cousin Roach. Roach lived in one of those lizard-infested caves on the east side of the mountain. Roach did not hunt bears. Roach did not grow grain. Roach spent his daylight hours throwing globs of bear fat, bison chips, and old rotten plants against the walls of his cave. Roach said he was an artist. He said it was a cap with edit with a capital A, even though writing has not been, yet been invented. Unlikely as it may seem, Roach had a woman. She was, however, the ugliest female on the mountain. She spent her daylight hours lying on the dirty floor of Roach's cave and staring at the smears of old bear fat, moldy bison chips, and rotting plants on the walls. She, she used to say that this was Roach's soul. She would also say that Roach had a very big soul. Very big and very smelly. As I approached the mouth of Roach's cave, I smelt pungent smoke. In fact, the cave was filled with this smoke. In the middle of the cave sat Roach and his woman. They were burning a big pile of leaves and inhaling the smoke. What are you doing? I asked. I asked, uh, turn on, baby, said Roach. I just invented it. Uh, what does uh, turning on mean? Well, you get this weed, dig, you burn it, and then you honk the smoke. I scratched my head, inadvertently killing several of my favorite fleas. Uh, why do that? I asked. It, uh, like, uh, gets you high. Well, you know, you don't see any further off the ground than I am, I observed, and you're still kind of runty. Pugh, forget it, man. It's only for artists, philosophers, and metaphysicians anyway, <laughs> even though philosophy and metaphysics have not yet been invented. Dig my latest! On the nearest wall of the cave was this big blob of bear fat. In the middle of it was a small piece of bison chip. Red and green and brown plant stains surrounded this. It smelled as good as it looked. Um, interesting, I said. Uh, like a masterpiece, baby. Uh, I call it the soul of man. Um, the soul of man? Er, uh, it does sort of look like a foot. Uh, no, no, man. Soul, not soul. Uh, but Roach, spelling hasn't been invented yet. Uh, sorry, I forgot. Anyway, uh, trying to make him feel a little bit better. Uh, it's very artistic, whatever that meant. Uh, thanks, baby. Uh, what's the matter, Roach? Uh, he really looked awful. We haven't like eating in a week. Why ha don't you go out and kill a bear or something? I suggested. I don't have time to waste on hunting, Roach said indignantly. I must live for art. Oh, it appears you are dying for art. You can't do very well do much painting when you are dead. Uh, well, uh, anyway, said Roach in a very tiny voice. I'm a pretty lousy hunter in the first place. Uh, I would probably starve even if I spent the whole day hunting. Or maybe the bear would kill me. Uh, this way, at least I'm starving for a reason. I must admit, it made a kind of sense. Roach is terribly nearsighted. Also amazingly scrawny. Uh, the original 98-pound weakling. Hmm, I observed. Hmm, what? Asked Roach. Well, you know old Aardvark. He can't hunt either, so what he does is that he makes spearheads and trades them for bears. Maybe you could go into business, Roach cried, and become bourgeoisie. Please, I am an artist. And besides, I don't know how to make spearheads. Hmm. Hmm? I know. You could trade your paintings. Oh, cool, baby. Or, uh... Only why would anyone buy want to trade a painting for food? Well, uh, uh, mm, it's, uh, uh, I guess I'll just have to starve. Uh, wait a minute, um, er, if I can get someone to trade you food for your paintings, will you give me some of the food, say, oh, um, one bear out of ten? Sure. What have I got to lose? It's a deal, then? Deal, baby. I had just invented the ten percenter. So I went to see Peacock. Peacock lived in the weirdest cave of the mountain, all fixed up with uh, stuff like moose skins dyed pink, stuffed armadillos, and walls covered with withered morning glories. For some reason, which I have not yet been able to fathom, the women of the more henpecked men on the mountain give Peacock pears to, uh, bears to make the same kind of messes in their c caves. Peacock is pretty weird himself. He was dressed in a skin-tight, saber-toothed skin dyed bright violet. Oh, sweets. 
Uh, Peacock said as I entered his perfume cave. Uh, Hello, Peacock, I said uneasily. Uh, Heard about Roach? Roach! That dirty, dirty man! That beatnik with the positively unspeakable cave! That's him, I said. Uh, Roach the artist. Very good artist, you know. After all, he invented it. Well, well, what about that dreadful, dreadful creature? Well, you know your friend Cockatoo? Please, sweet! Do not mention that thing Cockatoo in my presence again! Cockatoo and I are on the outs! I don't know what I ever thought him! He's gotten so unspeakably butch! Uh, you see, Cockatoo was this uh, <clears throat> friend of Peacock's, or uh, was. They uh, uh, invented something together. Uh, nobody is quite sure what it is, is but uh, we've organized a vice squad, uh, just in case. Uh, yeah, well, anyway Cockatoo, anyway, Cockatoo is paying Roach 20 bears to do a painting in his cave. He says that having an original roach in his cave will make your cave like like um, a positive sloth den, buddy. I think his words were. Ooh! Peacock shrieked. Ooh! He began to jump up and down the, on the cave, a pounding his little fists against the walls. That monster! That vulnerable beast! Ooh, it's horrid! That's what it is! Ooh, what am I going to do, sweet? Whatever am I going to do? Well, I... Um, Roach is my cousin, you know, and I have some pull with him. I suppose I could convince him to do a painting in your cave instead of cockatoos, especially if you paid 30 bears instead of 20. Oh, would you, sweet? Would you really? Well, I don't know. I kind of like you, Peacock, but on the other hand, pretty, 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 please. <sighs> okay, Peacock, you've talked me into it. So, Peacock got his original roach for 30 bears. Next week, I went to see Cockatoo, and I told him the story. I got him to pay 40 bears. 40 and 30 is 70, which gave me 7. Not bad for a couple of hours' work. I better watch out, or someone will invent income tax. I saw a roach the other week, the great. He's moved to a bigger cave on the west side of the mountain. He has a fine new leopard skin and three new women. He's even invented the Havana cigar so he can have something expensive to smoke. Unfortunately, he has discovered that he no longer needs me to make deals with him. His going price is 80 bears of painting. I, like a dope, neglected to invent the in- renewable exclusive agency contract. <laughs> Can't invent them all, I suppose. Roach has become truly insufferable, though. He now talks of art with a small A and bears with a capital B. He is the world's first Philistine. He is going to get his. Have you, how do you like my fine new leopard skin? Would you like one of my Havana cigars? Have you met this new woman yet? Have you seen my new cave? I can buy and sell Roach now. I am the first tycoon. How did I do it? Well, Hog was the mountain bum. He never trimmed his beard. He didn't have a woman, not even an ugly one. He just lay around his filthy cave all day, doing nothing but belching occasionally. A real slob. But even a jerk like Hog can throw bear fat and bison chips against a cave wall. I made an artist out of Hog. I did this by telling him he could make 50 bears a day just by throwing bear fat and bison chips against the walls of other people's caves. This appealed to Hog. This time, I did not neglect to invent the renewable exclusive sea agency contract. It was another 10% deal. Hog gets 10%. Then I went to Peacock's cave. I stared in dismay at Roach's paintings. What is that? I sneered. That sweets is an original Roach. Oh, is it a divide? The sensitivity, the style, such great, such Roach! You can't be serious. Why, that neo-pseudo-classical modern stuff went out with the brontosaurus. You're miles behind times, Peacock, I said, thereby inventing the art critic. The artist today, of course, is the great Hog. Hog! Hog is a beastly, beastly, a rude, filthy, stupid, smelly thing, a positive slob, while his whole cave is a wretched mash of slop. Exactly. That is the source of his greatness. Hog is the mountain's foremost slop artist. Ooh! How much do the great Hog's paintings cost? One hundred bears apiece. Cockatoo is already contracting to. I told you never to mention that creature to me again! He must not steal an original hog from me, do you hear? I simply could not bear it! But how this is getting so expensive! 
I gave Peacock my best understanding smile. Peacock, old man, I have a little business proposition for you. Well, that's all there was to it. You guessed it. Now when Peacock makes one of his messes in some henpecked caveman's cave, it always includes at least one original hog or maybe a couple of original tree sloths. Tree sloth being another jerk artist I have under contract. I sell the paintings to Peacock for a hundred bears, and he charges his suck um, <clears throat> client two hundred bears for the same mess of bear fat and bison chips. Peacock calls this interior decorating. I call it civilization. Maybe it'll last for a couple of months, if I'm lucky.